Hi and welcome students. In this computer fundamentals video I'm going to be going over the different types of computers and what their uses are. The first one I'm going to go over is desktop. Desktop computers you're going to see at work, school, and home settings. The reason businesses and schools prefer desktop computers as to, uh, opposed to laptop computers is because usually you could get computers with better specs for a cheaper price when they're desktop versus laptop. The reason is desktop computers are not portable so you can't just pick up and go anywhere with your desktop computer. So you sacrifice portability but what you gain on the hardware side uh, is a big plus. This is because you have a computer case right here and the computer case allows you for a lot more customization options when it comes to the computer's internals. You also comes with a monitor in most cases um, although an old TV monitor works with the computer if you have an HDMI port and uh, so you have a lot of options for monitors as well. Uh, another great thing about desktop computers is they have a detached keyboard and so you have a, usually a lot larger keyboard to work with and more functionality on that keyboard. Finally, you have a mouse as well. The mouse is generally the preferred option for navigating around your user interface and so it's great to have a mouse option. So those are some of the benefits of a desktop computer. Alternatively, we have laptop computers. In laptop computers, they, uh, they're they powered in two different ways. You have the cable power, so you could plug it into uh, your laptop's uh, cable port for its power and then plug it into the wall and use it that way, and that won't drain your other power option, which is your battery. Now, battery is unique to laptop uh, as opposed to a desktop anyway. I'm going to go over some other battery powered computers, but the battery is great because you could take it with you on the go. So if you're a student and you want to take your computer to class, a laptop is a good option for you. Keep in mind, laptops are still pretty heavy because they have a keyboard on them and they use a trackpad for your, um, your mouse interface. So good news about them, they're portable, they're great for school or even work if you travel a lot. Next up, you have your tablet computers. So tablets have some great benefits as well. The main one, they're handheld. Okay, they're extremely portable. You can fit them on in just about any bag. Okay, as far as the hardware on those go, what makes them unique is that they're touch sensitive. So it's kind of like your phone uh, in the fact that you touch to navigate. But the downside is there's no keyboard. So it's going to be a lot slower when it comes to, you know, well, generally you're going to be a lot slower when it comes to typing on one of these versus having the keyboard option. Next up, you also have no mouse, but you know, with touch sensitive, um, on something like a tablet, that's not as big of a deal. So um, the main downside of tablets is that they typically use a mobile operating system. So you're not going to, in most cases, get a tablet that uses Windows 10 or your uh, it, or you're never going to find a tablet that uses, a, well, at least not at the time of this video, that uses a Mac operating system. So you're not going to see those options. Instead, you're going to see Google Android and you're going to see um, Apple iOS. So it's going to be more like your phone's operating system rather than a full operating system uh, that you would have on a desktop, which is a huge benefit, or even a laptop. So uh, what you gain in portability, you lose in functionality when it comes to your operating system. So next up is a server. Uh, servers are basically used for networks. Uh, they serve information to other computers. And so if you're viewing this video on YouTube right now, basically YouTube stored uh, my video onto their server, and uh, which is one of these guys here. And so you are accessing that server's information to watch this video. So that's kind of how servers work. On the business level, servers are used to store and share files. So if your business has a server, it likely has a drive that you use uh, to navigate around files with your coworkers. This is a lot faster than running a USB stick around your office and giving people files that way or emailing back and forth. So um, that's why uh, they use servers. And so if you are a part of a business or a school or anything like that, chances are you guys have a drive that your business or school uses to uh, share files with one another. And so that uh, on a very small scale is what a server is and what it does. Next up, you have your other types of computers. I'm going to go over the smartphones on the left side. Smartphones, you have a variety of different things you can do on those. Uh, they're becoming more powerful all the time. You have internet, you have games, and you have LTE. Uh, LTE is the, um, is the service that your cell phone uses to access the internet without Wi-Fi. So, um, you know, the better your LTE coverage is, which is what all the computers are talking, or all the commercials, rather, are talking about, uh, the better and faster your internet is um, 
while you are not connected to Wi-Fi. So that would be like your uh, internet cell towers and things like that. So that's how your uh, smartphones uh, use internet without Wi-Fi or a, or a wired connection. Uh, next up is wearables. Those are things like your fitness trackers, your smart watches. These are getting a lot more popular. Take a look around, look at people's arms. You're going to see uh, probably the most popular ones would be like your Apple Watch, your Samsung Galaxy Watch, things like that. Um, these are getting a lot more powerful as well. They have the ability to track your heart rate. Um, they have the ability to uh, track your GPS if they have LTE coverage like the cell phones. So, And you can even sometimes get calls and send messages uh, over voice um, through the smartwatches as well. So those are becoming more popular as well. So next up on the top right you have your game consoles. Your game consoles like Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, Xbox. Uh, those are becoming really popular and uh, I guess they've been popular for a long time. One of the benefits to these is they're no longer just for playing games. So for instance you can log on to your PlayStation and use Netflix or Hulu or your Xbox and do anything like that as well. So they're becoming way more of a just an entertainment console in addition to the games that they uh, have on the on the platform as well. And finally we have TVs. Uh, smart TVs are becoming more popular. They come with apps pre-built into them like Netflix and Hulu as I mentioned before. But if you don't have a smart TV you have some other great options like Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku where you plug those in via USB stick like you see right here or HDMI rather to your TV and then you can access all those apps through your HDMI within your uh, television so you don't even necessarily need a smart TV to access all of those applications. So all of these different computers affect our lives in different ways. Hopefully this video helps you figure out maybe what computers uh, you're currently using in your life and maybe uh, I talked about a couple things that you can also add to your life as well. So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions, please put it in the comment section below and I'll do my best to respond to you and help you out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.